Chesbro, Conway, Cook, Cotto, Davis, De La Torre, De Leon, DeVore, Emerson, Ing, Evans, Fior, Fletcher, Fong, Fuentes, Fuller, Furatani, Gaines, Galgiani, Garrick, Gilmore, Hagman, Hall, Harkey, Hayashi, Hernandez, Hill, Huber, Huffman, Jeffries, Jones, Knight, Lou, Logue, Lowenthal, Ma, Mendoza, Miller, Monning, Nava, Nastande, Nilo, Nilsson, John A. Perez, V. Manuel Perez, Portentino, Ruskin, Solace, Saldana, Silva, Skinner, Smythe, Solorio, Strickland, Swanson, Torlikson, Torres, Tarico, Tran, Valines, Yamada, Madam Speaker.
Members, members of quorum is present. We ask our guests and visitors in the rear of the chambers and in the gallery to please stand for the prayer. We ask our assembly chaplain, Father, Father Papadimos, to uh, offer the morning's prayer. Thank you, Father. Good afternoon. Let us pray. Lord, in order to see more of you in our life, we need to do our part to develop a relationship with you. We have, we have to choose to submit our heart to you and to allow you to purify us on the inside. Lord, help us to be more selective in the things we watch on TV, what we listen to on the radio and read in the magazines. Ultimately, whatever we give our attention to will shape our heart and our character. Father in heaven, open our heart to you and purify us by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Members, please remain standing for the flag salute. The flag salute will be led by Assemblymember Anthony Portentino. Mr. Portentino. You may be seated. Thank you, Mr. Portentino. We have the reading of the previous day's journal. The Assembly Chamber of Sacramento, Thursday, January 7, 2010. The Assembly met at 12 a.m. Arnold Israel Hall, Assistant Speaker Pro Tem of the Assembly Presiding, Chief Clerk E. Dawson Wilson at the desk, Assistant Clerk Timothy Moreland reading Mr. the roll. Mr. Rico moves and Mr. Blakely seconds that the reading of the previous day's journal be dispensed with. Presentations of petitions, there are none. Introduction and reference of bills will be deferred. Reports of committees will be deemed read and amendments deemed adopted. Message from the governor, there are none. Message from the Senate, there are none. Motions and resolutions will move to. Mr. Tirico. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Hereby request unanimous consent for Assembly Members Bradford, Furutani, and Hayashi to have guests and photographers on the floor today. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to allow the following members to adjourn in memory of individuals today. Mr. Block, Ms. Brownlee, Mr. Cotto, Mr. Eng, Ms. Fuller, Mr. Garrick, Mr. Gilmore, Mr. Hagman, Mr. Huffman, Mr. Logue, Mr. Nava, Mr. Nielo, Mr. Nielsen, and myself. Without objection, uh, Mr. Mr. Tirico, if you can hold for just one second. Members, I want to recognize uh, Assembly Member, uh, past Assembly Member Kuehl, Sheila Kuehl, who is present with us today. Ms. Kuehl, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Thank you, Mr. Tirico. You may continue, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I hereby request unanimous consent to re refer AB 259 by Ms. Skinner from the Health Committee to the Rules Committee pursuant to Assembly Rule 96. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirements to allow the Education Committee to meet and to hear AB 284 by Mr. Garrick on Wednesday, January 13th at 1.30 p.m. in Room 437, pending re-referral from the Higher Education Committee. Without objection, the request is granted and the clerk will note. Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notes requirements to allow the Higher Education Committee to hear AB 1436 by Mr. Portentino on Monday, January 11th, upon adjournment of session in room 444. Without objection, the clerk will note. Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notes requirements to allow the Judiciary Committee to hear AB 25 by Mr. Gilmore on Thursday, January 14th, upon adjournment of session in room 444 pending re referral from the Environmental Safety and Toxic Materials Committee. Without objection, the clerk will note. Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirements to allow the Judiciary Committee to hear AB 1589, authored by the Accountability and Administration Administrative Review Committee, on Thursday, January 14th, upon adjournment of session in room 444 pending re referral from the Human Services Committee. Without objection, the request is granted and clerk will note. Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notes requirements to allow the Revenue and Taxation Committee to hear AB 384 by Ms. Ma and AB 658 by Ms. Hayashi on Monday, January 11th at 1.30 p.m. in room 126. Without objection, the clerk will note. Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notes requirements to allow the Transportation Committee to hear AB 498 by Ms. Hayashi and AB 1097 by Mr. Eng 
on Monday, January 11th at 1.30 p.m. in room 4202. Without objection, the clerk will note. Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to waive the file notice requirements to allow the Veterans Affairs Committee to hear AB 1088 by Mr. Fletcher on Tuesday, January 12th at 4 p.m. in room 126 pending re-referral from the Revenue and Taxation Committee. Without objection, the request is granted and the clerk will note. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to allow uh, Ms. Hayashi to take a file item 193 ACR 96 regarding Korean American Day out of file order for the purpose of third reading today. Without objection, the clerk will note. Mr. Speaker, at the request of the following authors, please send the following bills to the inactive file, file item 196, SB 608 by Senator Duchenne, and file item 197, SB 524 by Senator Correa. Clerk will note. And finally, Mr. Speaker, at the request of the, uh, of the following author, I'm giving one day notice of intent to remove the following bill from the inactive file, file item A-26, AB1004, by the renowned Mr. Portentino. Clerk will note. Thank you. One day notice. Clerk will note. I want to recognize the absences of the excuse absences of the Honorable Lori Saldana and Honorable Amina Carter. Members, we will recess the regular session for the purpose of convening the fifth extraordinary session. Without objection, we will substitute the prayer pledge and other opening procedures in the regular session for those items in the fifth extraordinary session. We'll go back to motions and resolutions. Um, Mr. Tarico, whenever you're ready, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There is a resolution at the desk to adjourn the fifth extraordinary session. I request unanimous, unanimous consent to take up SCR 2 without reference to file today for the purpose of third reading. SCR 2 sets the adjournment of the 2009-2010 fifth extraordinary session signing die on January 11, 2010. Without objection, the clerk will read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 2 by Senator Steinberg relative to the final adjournment of the 2009 10 5th Extraordinary Session of the Legislature. Uh, Mr. Tirico, you may uh, open on the resolution. Members, I know we're all so disappointed to see the 5th Extraordinary Session come and gone, but yes, its uh, end has come. Please uh, join me in adjourning uh, with an I vote. Clerk will open the roll on the resolution. The clerk will close the roll tally the votes. Ayes 54, no 0. The resolution is adopted. Members, we are back in regular session. Members, uh, we will recess the regular session for the purpose of convening the 8th extraordinary session. We are in the 8th Extraordinary Session without objection. We will substitute the prayer pledge and other items uh, for the 209-210 regular session for the items in the 8th Extraordinary Session. Uh, Governor Schwarzenegger has issued a proclamation to convene the legislator for the, ex for the Extraordinary Session. The clerk will read the proclamation uh, from the governor. 
Whereas on this date, pursuant to Section 10F of Article 4 of the Constitution of the State of California, I have hereby proclaimed a fiscal emergency, and now, therefore, I, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Governor of the State of California, by virtue of the power and authority vested in me in accordance with Section 10F of the Article 4 of the Constitution of the State of California, do by our convening the legislature of the State of California to meet in an extraordinary session at Sacramento, California, on the 8th day of January 2010, at a time to be determined to consider and act upon legislation to address the phys physical, phys fiscal emergency proclaimed by me this day, witness whereof I here and to set my hand and cause the great state of the sale of, Cal of California to be affixed on the 8th day of January 2010. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Governor of California. Uh, the next order of business is the election of a speaker. Mr. Tirico. Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent that the vote and oath of office for Speaker Karen Bass on December 1st, 2008 in the regular session be substituted in the 8th extraordinary session. Very well, Mr. Tirico. Uh, Mr. Tirico's motion requires a second. The motion is second by uh, Mr. Davis. The motion requires 41 votes. If there is uh, an objection. Very well. We'll do unanimous, unanimous consent to substitute without objection. Very well. Seeing and hearing no objection, the motion carries. Uh, Karen Bass is elected speaker in the eighth extraordinary session. Uh, Mr. Tirico, you may proceed with your motion. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that the permanent standing rules of assembly for the 2009-2010 regular session be hereby adopted as the rules for the 2009-2010 eighth extraordinary session. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I move that House Resolution Number 3 in the regular session relative to the payment of members and distribution of weekly histories be deemed adopted in the eighth extraordinary session. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I move that the non-member officers in the 2009-2010 regular session be deemed the non-member officers in the eighth extraordinary session and that their respective oaths in the regular session be substituted in the eighth extraordinary session. Without objection. Uh, we have completed the organization task for the 209 to 10 extraordinary session. Mr. Rico moves and Mr. Blakely seconds that the eighth extraordinary session is in recess under call of the speaker. We are back in regular session, members. Members would like to recognize uh, Mayor Harold Hoffman from the city of Lawndale, California, the fifth, in the 51st Assembly District, 30 years elected in that community. Uh, let's recognize him, please. In the rear of the chambers, welcome to the chambers. Thank you for visiting us. Is Ms. Salas present? Ms. Salas, you have a special guest you'd like to recognize? Ms. Salas. Yes, I do. I don't see him in the back, though. Um. <laughs> Would you like to delay your recognition? Yes, because Is he I upstairs? Is that it? Do you want me to delay it, or do you want me to I welcome your, my... Would, your guest is... In, upstairs. In the gallery. Okay. Yes, in the gallery. I would like to introduce and welcome a very, very good friend of mine. Um, I've known him for very, very many years, and he had a distinguished career here in the assembly. He's a former assembly member, and now he's a college professor, and he, he is here with a group of his students, and he teaches a class on nonprofit advocacy at the University of San Diego. So 
I can't see him, but I know he's up there someplace with his students. If you would please stand and be recognized, former assembly member, now Professor Howard Wayne and his students. Well, welcome. Welcome, to welcome back to our chambers. Welcome back to the chamber. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Salas. Mr. Fiertani, you have a special guest you'd like to recognize today? Thank you. Mr. Liu. Very well, thank you, sir. Okay. Members, we will now move to a special ceremony to commemorate the Korean uh, American Day. Mrs. Mrs. Hayashi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, it's my pleasure to present to you. Ms. Ayashi, let's take up the resolution first. Permission was granted to the Assembly Member Hayashi to move out of file order to take up ACR 96. The <laughs> clerk will read uh, item 193. Assembly concurrent resolution 96 by Assembly Member Hayashi relative to Korean American Day. Ms. Hayashi, you may now open on the measure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, I'm pleased to present to you ACR 96. This resolution procra proclaims January 13, 2010 as Korean American Day, recognizing the historic and continuing contributions of Korean Americans to the state of California. While most came to this great nation after 1965, Korean Americans have been pursuing the American dream since the early 1900s. Their dreams of a better life and a better future for their children helped lay the strong and rich, and rich foundation of our young United States. With courage, strength, and determination, just over 1,000 Korean immigrants made the first ventures onto American soil, laboring on the plantation of Hawaii and later on farmlands of California's Central Valley. And despite social and cultural challenges, these individuals and their children grew up as patriotic American citizens serving in the armed forces of the United States of World War II to protect our freedoms and liberties. Since then, Korean Americans have gone on to build thriving communities and contribute to society in all fields, from sports and technology to the arts and government. And today, as President Obama encourages volunteerism and community service, Korean Americans have likewise promoted the importance of giving back. Through numerous nonprofit associations and organizations in California, Korean Americans provide important social services to local communities and actively advocate on issues from health care and housing to civil rights and economic development. Today, resolution, uh, today's resolution serves to remind us all of the significance of California's diversity and its rich cultural history, that those from all different backgrounds have helped to make this the greatest state in the world. It also serves to instill a sense of pride in future generations of Korean Americans, demonstrating the depth of this community's roots here in the United States. And by celebrating Korean American Day, we are inspiring all Americans to be courageous, as innovative, and as steadfast as those who came before us. I hope you'll join me in honoring the dreams and accomplishments of California's Korean Americans and support ACR 96. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you. Mr. Fong, you're recognized, sir. Good afternoon. I rise in support of ACR 96, Korean American Day. I'd also like to welcome Mr. Ted Lee, President of the Korean Dry Cleaners Association of Northern California, and Mr. Dong Lee, also from the association. The, the Dry Cleaning Association represents nine California counties, including my district in Silicon Valley. The dry cleaning business has played an essential role for many communities throughout the state. 
in addition has provided a fundamental way of life for many Korean Americans, enabling them to educate their children, put food on the table, and gives them a sense of pride. I commend the Korean American Dry Cleaners Association for their commitment to entrepreneurship and wish them nothing but the best in their future endeavors. Welcome to Sacramento. Thank you. Mrs. Ma. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, it's fitting that as we welcome the new year and discuss the goals of job creation that we are here today honoring the contributions made by Korean Americans. Microenterprises, businesses with five or few employees represent nearly 90% of all businesses in the state. Some estimates show that nearly two-thirds of all new jobs in the state are created by microenterprises. In fact, nationwide, the rate of Korean business ownership is 71% higher than their, their share of the population. Korean American owned businesses have been an anchor in San Francisco's local economy, providing goods and services that so many of us depend on. Their businesses will lead us out of the recession by bringing new jobs and maintaining jobs to the state. I would like to thank all of the Korean Americans who came up to the Capitol today for their contributions to California as employers, business leaders, citizens, and contributing members to the American dream. Thank you, Ms. Ma. Mr. Fiorentani. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Members, I rise not only to welcome our friends from the Korean American community to this August body, but to make a special point to honor our own assembly person, Mary Hayashi. I don't know if people know, but Mary is the second Korean American to be elected to this body and the first Korean American woman, and I believe that deserves a great round of applause. The first Asian Pacific Islander elected to the Assembly in the state of California was elected in 1961, and that was Alfred Song. The first member was a Korean American. And as Mary represents the second Korean American, I have to tell you there was a bit of distance relative to time for Alfred Song being elected in 1961 and actually Mary being elected in the next millennium. I was able to invite, although they're not here yet, from Los Angeles, the LA Community College Board, another young dynamic Korean American woman named Tina Park, who was recently elected to the LA Community College District Board of Trustees, and the mayor of Irvine, who Suki Kang, who also is a Korean American and now the mayor of that great city. I'm not pointing out these individuals to scare anybody, but I have to tell you, Mary is not only the second, but she's not the last. There will be many more Korean Americans elected to this August body as this dynamic community represents itself in almost every possible way in society. Those of you in Los Angeles know how dynamic and in big the Korean American community is. In Orange County, their presence is undeniable, and now Korea towns exist in almost every metropolitan area and you can get kimchi almost at every corner market. So ladies and gentlemen, I welcome those of you from the Korean American community to the assembly and I thank Mary Hayashi for Korean American Day. Thank Th you. Thank you. Mr. Liu. Mr. Speaker and members, I rise and support this resolution. I also want to commend Assemblywoman Hayashi for bringing this resolution for her history-breaking election as well. I want to uh, say I went to Korea last month. Uh, my mother-in-law is Korean, uh, visited my wife's relatives, beautiful country, amazing food. And Korean Americans are now this, one of the largest and fastest rising demographic groups in California. Uh, our state is better because of the contributions of Korean Americans. I want to note that I have brought up here Brad Lee, who is co-president of the National Korean American Democratic Organization, and uh, Mary Hayashi will be announcing him later as well when she does a resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Mr. Davis. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker and members of this August body. It is certainly with honor that I rise as the representative of the 48th State Assembly District that uh, encompasses Koreatown, the largest community of Korean Americans in this country second only to Korea itself. And what an honor it is to serve with the first Korean American State Assemblywoman, Mary Hayashi. Uh, I'm here and I'm reminded of how well we have gained from the contribution of Korean Americans. 
Uh, my father, who is a veteran, uh, in 1953 was involved in the Korean-American conflict during that time between North and South Korea. But as I look back on my own career, and I can say uh, with pride how much I have advanced from the relationships that I have developed with Korean Americans in our very own communities here in the state of California. In every field of human endeavor, we can look to significant contributions of Korean Americans. I'm very proud to see uh, an attorney, a community activist in Koreatown, Brad Lee here, uh, a man of whom uh, I've worked with um, very much on many projects. And so, as we uh, celebrate Korean American Day, uh, I do so with pride, and I look forward to continuing to work uh, throughout my tenure with the Korean American community. Thank you so much, Speaker, and thank you so much, members. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, Mrs. Harkey. I rise, too, to honor the Korean Americans here today and Mary Hayashi. Uh, I was born during the Korean conflict. My father was actually in Korea when I was born. He did not see me until I was five months old. And uh, it was a great difficulty on my mother who had another child, but we moved in with our family and made do. But I'm very proud that he worked for the effort to help the free and democratic Korea. And I'm very sorry for those of you who have people still left on the other side. And I pray that there's some sort of unity that can take place someday, somehow, so that all Koreans can know the value of what you have created in your country and what you have brought to our country, uh, which has been phenomenal. So thank you very much for your service. Thank you for uh, being here today. And thank you, Mary, for your good work on their behalf. Thank you, Ms. Harkey. Mr. Swanson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in solidarity with my colleague, Mary Hayashi, uh, to pay special tribute today uh, to the Korean-American community. It's been uh, 15 years since I've visited Korea, and so if you're planning any trips, please let me know. Uh, California's, uh, California's, <laughs> California's diversity uh, is, uh, 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 is enhanced by the uh, growing co Korean American community. I know in my community of, of Oakland, uh, we have uh, 126 uh, languages that are, that are spoken. And so as Oakland is diverse and, and, and California uh, uh, is enriched, uh, we stand in salute of this resolution. And thank you for your specific leadership and your reminder every year of the important contribution of the Korean American community. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Strickland. Thank you. I'd just like to take a moment to point out that the highest ranking Korean American woman in the country is a Republican by the name of Michelle Park Steele, who currently serves on the BOE. And so I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize her among all the other notable Republican, or excuse me, all the other notable Korean Americans uh, being honored today. Thank you. <laughs> so noted, Ms. Strickland. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Ayashi, you may close. Um, thank you uh, to all the members who spoke, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to ask that the first rule be open for co-authors. Absolutely. Uh, the first uh, vote will be for co-authors. Members, this is for co-authors. The clerk will open the roll. <laughs> members, this is for co-authors. This is for co-authors, members. This is for co-authors, members. Clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. 67 co-authors are added. 67 co-authors are added. We'll do a voice, voice vote on the resolution. All in favor of the resolution, please signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Mrs. Hayashi, you may introduce your guest. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Um, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, some of the representatives from the Korean American community who are with us today. 
Uh, we have uh, two representatives from the Northern California Korean American Dry Cleaners Association, uh, the President Ted Lee, who's already been introduced, and the Vice President, Mr. Dong Il Lee, who are here with us. Uh, the Consul General of Republic of Korea from San Francisco, Mr. Bon Woo Koo, is also here with us with his assistant, Esther Na. Uh, we also have representatives from the San Francisco Korean American Association from Ms. Ma's district, uh, President Mr. Sang On Kim and Vice President David Kim are with us. Uh, we also have the uh, Korean American Community Association of the Greater Sacramento, Mr. Paul Cho. The vice, uh, he's the president, Vice President Su Ko Kang, and other representatives on the board are Jun Kun San James Lee and Mr. Bob Park. We need to work on some gender diversity here. Um, also representing the Korean American Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Dong Young Lee and uh, Mrs. Jung Shin from the uh, San Francisco Korean Cultural Center, uh, currently serving as the executive director. Um, also, Sarah Lee from Social Security Administration and one of the leaders from the East Bay. Uh, we also have uh, been mentioned but Mr. Brad Lee, all the way from uh, Los Angeles, a uh, guest of uh, Mr. Ted Liu today, representing the National Organization for Korean American Democrats. So please welcome all of the guests here today. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Members, this concludes our ceremony. Thank you, Ms. Hayashi. Can we please again thank all of our visitors? There are no uh, second reading items today. We'll pass and retain all items on the third reading. This concludes the business on the daily file. All other items remaining will be passed and retained. All motions shall be continued. Members, please be advised of the calendar for this week's session. Tuesday, January 12th, there is check-in session. Wednesday, January 13th, there's check-in session. Thursday, January 14th, floor session at 9.30 a.m. Friday, January 15th, check-in session. Monday, January 18th, it's a holiday, Martin Luther King birthday. Tuesday, January 19th, members, Tuesday, January 19th, floor session will begin at 12 noon. We'll move to adjourn in memories. Mr. Block, are you prepared? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
I rise today to adjourn in memory of Sal Price, a San Diego icon who passed away on December 14th at the age of 93. Some of you may have shopped at a Price Club over the years and thought that it derived its name from its excuse, promise excuse of me, low Mr. prices. Block. In real, thank you, Mr. Speaker. In reality, Price Clubs were named after their founder, Sal Price. Mr. Price was born in the Bronx on January 23rd, 1916. His family moved to San Diego in his youth, and he graduated from San Diego State University in 1934. He then attended and earned a law degree from the University of Southern California in 1938. He worked as a business lawyer until 1954, when he and several partners created FedMart, a local discount warehouse. That chain grew to more than 40 stores and was later sold to a German retailer. Price and his son then founded Price Club in 1976, which was originally aimed at supplying small businesses. The warehouse grew to 94 locations and merged with Costco in 1993. Price Club's written policy was that workers would be paid, and this is a quote from their policy, at close to the highest prevailing wage in the community. Unlike many of his retail competitors, Mr. Price maintained good relationships with union members and made sure that non-union workers received the same benefits as union workers. Even today, Costco maintains Price's philosophy of valuing its employees even over stockholders and provides health insurance to 90% of its workers. Mr. Price himself kept his salary at around 10 times the median salary of his workers at a time when CEOs at most Fortune 500 firms are paid nearly 500 times the median salary of workers. Although his salary was low, Mr. Price still devoted most of his earnings to charity. In the late 1980s, Price donated $2 million to the construction of a new student center at the University of California, San Diego. Named the Price Center, it opened on April 21, 1989, and housed the main student bookstore, food court, movie theater, ballrooms, and meeting rooms. Mr. Price was also responsible for negotiating with the city of San Diego on a plan to reduce, er, reduce urban blight and crime in the mid-city neighborhood of City Heights, where he grew up in the 1930s. He donated millions for what was widely called a renaissance in housing, including a new police station, a library, a recreation center, and a major ongoing school reform effort. Mr. Price leaves behind two sons, Robert and Larry, both of San Diego, five grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. His wife, Helen, passed in 2008. Sal Price will be dearly missed, but his legacy to the people of San Diego will live on forever. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Block. Before I continue with the journey memories, I'm sorry, Ms. Salas. Thank you very much. I also would like to say a few words about Sal Price. And as you heard Marty's um, reading of all the accomplishments and how he was very, very unique in how he built up this wonderful model of, of business. But uh, before he was known for Price Club, he actually founded the FedMart stores in San Diego. And the very first FedMart opened in the late 50s, I think, or early 60s. And I remember going as a little girl, and it was such a different concept because you'd walk into this warehouse and there'd just be cases of foods. But I think that what I remember about FedMart the most that was so fond in my childhood memories is that when I was in seventh grade in 1960, he opened up his second store, and it was on J Street and Broadway in Chula Vista. And it was just close enough for me and my girlfriends to be able to walk to. And we would go down to the Fed Mart store, and we would be able to buy a 45 record for 50 cents, as opposed to buying it in a record store for 75 cents. So we built up our record collection of 45s at the Fed Mart store on J and Broadway but he gave so much back to the community and I think if every business model would be shaped on the business model of Saul Price and he wrote uh, he stated that he, in order of his priorities his business model was customer satisfaction first the benefit of his employees second good quality merchandise and lastly the corporate profit 
and he made millions and millions of dollars based on that model. And he was panned on, uh, by the stock market um, analyst. And he was panned because of his business model, because he placed the workers' rights and the workers' benefits above the bottom line. But he knew that when his, his employees were taken care of, that they would provide the very best of service to his customers, which ultimately resulted in the best customer satisfaction. I wish every business organization would follow the model of Saul Price, and we adjourn in his memory. He will be missed. Thank you, Mrs. Salas. Uh, before we continue with the adjourn in memories, Mr. Hackman has guests uh, here in the rear of the chambers. Um, from the city of Walnut, we have uh, Mayor Tom King, Mayor Pro Tem Tony Cartanega, Councilwoman Nancy Tregar, and City Manager Rob Wishner. Please recognize the members of the City of Walnut City Council. Welcome to the chambers. Thank you. Assembly person Julia Brownlee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and, member, and members. I rise to adjourn today in memory of Bob Burke. On November 28th, Pacific Palisades resident Bob Burke passed away very suddenly at the age of 61. Bob graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Pomona College and went on to get his law degree at UCLA. Both in his law practice and in public life, Bob focused on civil rights and social justice. He worked for the Center for Law in the uh, Public Interest, served as president of the California Attorneys for Criminal Justice, and became very active in the Pacific Palisades Democratic Club and became president of that club last year. Bob proudly boasted that the Santa Monica Democratic Headquarters Office that he helped open in 2008 made hundreds of thousands of calls on behalf of then presidential candidate Barack Obama and many other progressive candidates and ballot initiatives in the region. An active member of Death Penalty Focus, Bob never stopped fighting for human rights and people at the margins of society. He is survived by his very proud parents, his son Chad Burke, to whom I extend my heartfelt condolences. Bob was a lovely man with a constant smile and will be greatly missed by his community. It is with great sadness that I adjourn today in memory of Bob Burke. Thank you, Mrs. Brownlee, Assemblymember Joe Cotto. Uh, members, I'm sure that you remember uh, a couple of years ago during one of the, uh, during the Latino Spirit Awards that I had uh, stated and commented on the fact that during the Second World War, uh, Latinos and particularly Mexican Americans had had the highest percentage of Congressional Medal of Honor winners uh, during that war. Today, I am asking that you adjourn in memory uh, in the honor of Alejandro Reese Jr., Sr., I'm sorry, a man who dedicated his life to his country. As an Army infantryman in World War II, Alejandro received the Congressional Medal of Honor for single-handedly storming a, an enemy machine gun bunker twice during the Battle of Okiwan, Okinawa. President Harry Truman presented him with a Medal of Honor, the military's highest award for valor, during a ceremony at the White House in June of 1946, stating that in the face of overwhelming odds, Alejandro single-handedly saved his fellow soldiers. He spent his career in the Army. He fought in World War II and in the Korean War and retired as a Master Sergeant in the mid-1960s. He also received, in addition to the Congressional Medal of Honor, he received the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart for his heroic efforts. Members, thank you again for joining me in adjourning in the memory of Alejandro Reese, Sr. 
Thank you, Mr. Cotto. Assembly Member Ng. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Have you ever met someone from your community that's so dynamic, so accomplished that you say, boy, I wish I knew his or her parents? Chris Leong is an attorney with the California uh, Attorney General's Office, and I rise with deep sadness today to request that the Assembly adjourn in memory of Anna Jean Leong, the mother of a close friend and constituent of mine from Monterey Park, Mr. Chris Leong. Ms. Leong passed away recently at the age of 80 in Hawaii. She was born in Hawaii in 1929, was married to Godfrey in 1952. She worked as a medical records technician for the state of Hawaii for 30 years. We offer our deepest condolences to her and her children, Gerard, Jeannie, Christopher, two siblings, her brother Thomas, uh, and sister May Ao. Thank you. Thank you. Assemblymember Fuller. Speaker and members, I rise today in memory of a larger-than-life couple, uh, one who as a couple gave back tremendously to our community, and um, I'd like to just talk briefly about uh, what they've done. Two weeks ago, while most of us were tending to our holiday preparations, I attended the memorial service for Shirley Ann Fiddler. Shirley had been a loving wife to husband Claude for 54 years and spent her life devoted to her children, her grandchildren, and her pets. She loved laughter, chocolate, golf, good friends, and doing them all at the same time. Speaking at the funeral, her husband Claude talked of his undying love for his wife of 54 years and said goodbye one last time, and then returned to his seat. Not more than two weeks later, Claude left this life to join Shirley. Claude was born in 1932. He acquired both a bachelor's and master's degree, served in the United States Navy during the Korean War, and retired as a commander. Claude boasted an impressive resume, working for Chevron from 1958 to 1990, and retired as the general manager of drilling production for the southern region of the United States. This position with Chevron took he and Shirley and their two children traveling around the world to places like Hong Kong, Johannesburg, Paris, Perth, and Taft in Kern County. After retiring, Claude did consulting in and around Kern County, but he continued to give back to our community. He continued to serve as a leader, serving as the past president of the Downtown Rotary on the Kern County Retirement Board, executive director of the Gleaners of Food Distribution to the Needy Group and received the Golden Eagle Award from the Boy Scouts of America. Claude and Shirley had the kind of love most only dream about. They were devoted to each other, their family, and their community. And Kern County and the Southern United States and Paris and Johannesburg and Perth, all of us, who called them friends will miss them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fuller. Assembly Member Garrick. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to adjourn in the memory of Jim Mati. He passed away back on December the 6th in a tragic accident at Encinitas Beach. He was lobster diving. The Mati family have owned and operated a popular bakery in the North County of San Diego called VG's Donuts and Bakery that has done thousands, and I mean tens of thousands, of birthday cakes to wedding cakes for the residents of San Diego County. Jim learned in the family trade along with his five brothers and sisters and worked there on a daily basis. The bakery is frequented, I should say, by celebrities throughout North San Diego County and by uh, people like myself that after a good morning surf love to go there and get a hot cocoa and uh, a fresh donut from their fabulous uh, family recipe. Jim grew up in the district and attended San Diego High School. Jim is survived by six adult children, f his five siblings, and his mother, Betty. I ask that we adjourn in memory of Jim. Thank you, Mr. Garrick, Assemblymember Hagman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I must rise in adjourn memory to my grandmother, Anne. Ann Sullivan Hagman. Ann Sullivan Hagman was born on April 3rd, 1917 in Aiken, Minnesota. 
She passed away peacefully November 19, 2009. She was 92 years old. Anne, the youngest of nine children, grew up in Arkin and attended St. Catharines College in St. Paul, Minnesota. She married Bill, Bill Hagman, my grandfather, in 1939. The family moved to San Bernardino, California in 1954, where she lived until moving to the Sacramento area in 1994. And in addition to her jobs as the world's greatest mom and grandmother, she worked over 50 years in various oppositions, retiring in 1993 at age 76. She loved music, singing, family, and her dear canine companions, Jet and George. She would be missed by many, especially her sons and daughter, um, Uncle Brian Hagman of Mentone, Uncle Kurt and his wife Judy Hagman of Templeton, California, Uncle Tom and Jan Hagman of Highland, and her daughter Aunt Mary um, and Jay Winkler of Shingle Springs, California. She has seven grandchildren, ten great-grandchildren, and numerous nieces and nephews. She will be always remembered for her sweet disposition, kind heart, and loving ways. At a request, there, um, Grandma Ann will be laid to rest in St. Thomas Cemetery in Atkin, Minnesota, of the same quiet, private, simple way she lived her life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hagman, Assembly Members Logue, and Assembly Member Nelson, in that order. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the Assembly, I would uh, respectfully ask that we adjourn in the honor of Doug Young, a longtime Woodland resident, born in Meridian, a small town in Sutter County, involved himself in the farm credit system for many, many years, helped an awful lot of farmers get started in and stay in agriculture. His highest appointment was the regional director, the state director, rather, of the Farm Credit Administration, uh, Farmer's Home Administration, excuse me, uh, and he served there for about 10 years, then went into private business in the Woodland area. He was the consummate community citizen and his charge and challenge was always mentoring children, including my own children. Doug became a great friend of theirs and mentor. He was always involving himself in youth activities. He was very active in his Masonic Lodge and received many awards for his service and tenure there. He was always a true gentleman, a very partisan Republican, but a man that almost anyone could get along with. I, I don't know anyone could ever have been mad or angry or even frustrated with Doug, maybe his lovely wife Diane on occasion, but I rather even doubt that. He's a true example, ladies and gentlemen, of a community-minded citizen who had a very, very big heart. He surely will be missed. Doug Young. Yeah. Mr. Logue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, too, rise in honoring uh, Mr. Doug Young. I was privileged to have a long-standing relationship with Doug Young who passed away January 3rd after a long battle with leukemia. Doug Young was, uh, and his wife were present when my father passed away in Acapulco and, was, and are very close to our family. Doug loved life. Few were ever confused about where he stood with, uh, with his ideas. He spoke straight from the heart. He loved his friends and, and his family better than anybody else could ever have. Doug was inspired. Uh, to, by everybody that he touched. He was born in Meridian, California in 1935. He graduated from University of California, Davis, earning a BA degree in political science. Uh, his brother, Don Young, is also a member of Congress from the state of Alaska. He was, a civic, he was involved in civic volunteer work, especially in areas that he helped with dis distressed children. He was active politically and worked and served on the Yolo County Republican Central Committee. He co-founded the Woodland Republican Club and was appointed by the governor to the Yolo County Fair Board. Among many of his uh, awards, Doug was named the Yolo County Republican of the Year and was awarded the chapter by the Royal Arch Masons. He will be missed by his wife, Diane, and other family members he loved so much. It's a great honor that we adjourn in Doug Young's memory. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, sir. Assembly Member Nava. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise to adjourn in memory of former Santa Barbara Mayor Harriet Miller. Uh, she passed peacefully on Wednesday, January 6th. She served as mayor for the city of Santa Barbara from 1995 to 2001. She was 90 years old. She was born in Council, Idaho on July 4th, 1919. She graduated from Whitman College in Walla Walla, Washington with a bachelor's degree in chemistry, and she later earned a master's degree in political science from the University of Pennsylvania. 
She began her working career in academia, teaching political science at the University of Montana. She rose through the ranks to become a dean of students and a university regent. In an era when few women held public posts, Ms. Miller was elected to three terms as superintendent for public instruction for the state of Montana, a post that she held from 1956 to 1968. She came to Santa Barbara in 1981, setting up a political and management consulting firm. In December of 1986, she was appointed to the Santa Barbara City Council. Over the years, including 15 on the council, Ms. Miller put her stamp on the transformation of Santa Barbara from a sleepy town that shut down at 6 p.m. to an international tourist attraction known for its restaurants, cafes, shopping, as well as its scenic beauty. She instituted a youth council, a committee that later designed the city's first skateboard park, helped found Casa Esperanza, a homeless shelter on Cacique Street, and during the AIDS epidemic, pushed through a city ordinance banning discrimination against people with AIDS and HIV. In the mid-1990s, after the city lost $37 million in an Orange County fund that went bankrupt, she fought to recoup the loss, leading a group of small cities in similar straits. They came to be known as the Killer Bees. She was successful. Santa Barbara recovered all of its money as well as attorney's fees. She said, I like challenges. I get seasick standing still. Harriet Miller will be missed. Thank you, Mr. Nava. Assembly Member Nilo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. A few weeks ago, I adjourned in the memory of uh, a few members of our community who had become sort of the equivalent of institutions, and uh, unfortunately, we lost another. <clears throat> December 15th of uh, last year, um, William Snyder, uh, who owned William Glen, uh, and I know all Sacramento people know about William Glen, but even some of you who visit here know about uh, William Glen, a uh, high-end uh, retail sort of homeware uh, store. Uh, he partnered up with Glenn Forbes, uh, music students at Sac State, deciding that perhaps their future was better spent in the opportunities that retail offered them, and they, they uh, started a store using their first names, thus the William Glenn, selling uh, candles, actually. They opened up a store on Fulton Avenue uh, in 1963, and the next year moved uh, to Town & Country Village, where that store has uh, been uh, ever since. Its secret to success really was constantly evolving and adapting to the changes that the marketplace uh, offered them, opportunities that it offered them. And largely, it was Bill Snyder, who was the guy uh, practicing that managing by wandering around, by wandering around the store, uh, engaging with customers and just looking for the evidence of that next trend uh, that would uh, guarantee further success for William Glenn. They were, in fact, in 2006 awarded with the Global Inno Innovator USA Award for Excellence in uh, Housewares re re um, Retailing, and they were consistent winners of the our local Sacramento Magazine's uh, Best Of contest uh, being named continually as the best place to buy a special gift. Um, he started out in uh, Grass Valley, born there, but moved to Sacramento, was headed to a music career, as I, as I said. Uh, he wanted to be a music teacher. Uh, but discovered the excitement of the retail provision that grabbed him uh, for the rest of his life. I think all of us will remember Bill fondly as we uh, shop at William Glen, but we will miss uh, seeing him wander through the aisles. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the opportunity to adjourn in the memory of um, William Snyder. Thank you so much, Mr. Nilo. Members will probably be a session for about another hour and a half. Oh, I'm sorry, I've misunderstood. Members, I'm ready to entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Mr. Davis moves. Mr. Blakely seconds that um, the House stands adjourned to Thursday, January 14th at 9.30 a.m. Quorum call is lifted.
9.30 Thursday, January 14th. Watching the California Channel, an independent, nonprofit, public affairs cable television network. The California Channel features gavel to gavel coverage of the California legislature and other public affairs programming. Funding for the distribution of legislative programming on the California Channel is.